<clears throat> in each of these matters, Mr. Vasquez is here today after failing to appear before referee Coleman on November 17th, 2023. In the first case, bond is currently set at $1,969. This is the first bench warrant. In the second case, bond is currently $838, and this is the sixth bench warrant. Front of the court does not have any current employment information. Last payment made on these accounts was in July of 2022. Front of the court recommends that reasonable bonds be set in these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on January 3rd, 2024 at 8.45 a.m. before this court. Mr. Vasquez, you're before the court charged with uh, civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenant that the next hearing on January 3rd, 2024 at 8.45 a.m. There will be notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? At the moment, no, Your Honor. I just uh, got back to work, working for an uh, independent contractor out of Gull Lake. The company is called All Pro Construction. And I've only been working there for about four days now, five days, something like that. And he knows that that's the, what I have to do. That's one of the reasons I've been trying to get to work. Uh, the job that I had at Pennzoil, I lost it. I also got a job after that at O'Reilly's in Battle Creek, and I lost that. But the guy that gave me the job i've been working on and off for him for about 11 years now so he decided he was going to give me another shot as of right now i just missed two days okay well you have uh obviously uh you have six bench warrants in the one case only one on the uh, other i am concerned that it's now been about a year and a half since you've made a payment in this matter what I'm going to do is in the oh in the uh, 2018 case, I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $500. In the other case, I'm going to set it in the amount of $200. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? I was really hoping I might be able to get a PR bond so that I could get back to work and make okay. the money so that I could do that. Um, well, since since November or since uh, July of 2022, because I never we were hoping that you'd make payments too. So I had never gotten any of the paperwork that uh, the case manager told me that I was gonna get. She said he was she was gonna send it to my house, my apartment there. She said she was gonna do it twice, and I never got anything. But you, knew, you knew you had to pay support, though, correct, sir? Correct, but I was challenging. That's why I was waiting for the paperwork. Well, so you wait a year and a half uh, figuring, okay, I won't pay anything until I get some paperwork. Mm. Well, I don't really have an excuse for that. Yeah, I, I understand that. Okay, well, that's, that's what I'm setting the bond at, and uh, if you're able to post it, you can be released. You're, you're concluded. Uh, have a good day, sir. What was the total on that? Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Is here Thank today you. after failing to appear before referee Nets on December 9th, two thousand nineteen. Bond is currently set at one thousand and forty-five dollars. This is the first bench warrant. Front of the court is unaware of any employment information at this time. The last payment made on this account was in November of two thousand twenty-one. Front of the court recommends that a reasonable bond be set in this matter and it be scheduled for hearing on January 3rd, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Mr. Sloan, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your attendance at the next hearing on January 3rd, 2024, at 8 o'clock a.m., you will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? No. Okay. Well, court notes it is your first bench warrant, so I'm considering that. I'm also considering the fact that it's been uh, over two and a half years, well, now over uh, two years since, uh, since you've paid any child support. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $500. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're excused. Have a good day. In each of these matters, Thank Mr. Spragans is here today after failing to appear before this court on November 15th, 2023. In the 2011 case, bond is currently set at $12,795. This is the seventh bench warrant. In the 2017 case, bond is currently $1,339, and this is the fourth bench warrant. Front of the court is unaware of any employment information at this time. The last payment made on these accounts was in October of 2016. Front of the court recommends that reasonable bonds be set in these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on January 3rd, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Mr. Spragans, uh, you're before the court uh, charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on January 3rd, 2024, 8 o'clock a.m. Are you able to post a bond, sir? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, you have obviously a substantial arrearage in these matters, and you haven't paid in seven years. So, uh, of course, taking that into consideration. On the uh, 2011 case, I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $1,500. And in the other case, I'll set it in the amount of $500. So if you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're excused. Have a good day. You too. Look at it this way, Mr. Chapman. Uh, you're saving these people from getting in trouble over uh, New Year's Eve. You over know? New Year's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know where they'll be, and we know they won't be getting in trouble. That's right. In each of these matters, Mr. Frederick is here today after failing to appear before this court on February 24th, 2021. In the first case, bond is currently set at $6,347. This is the ninth bench warrant. In the second case, bond is currently $1,665. This is the fifth bench warrant. And in the third case, bond is currently $9,253. And this is the ninth bench warrant. Front of the court is unaware of any employment information at this time. Last payment made on these accounts was in November of 2020. Front of the court recommends that reasonable bonds be set in these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on January 3rd, 2024 at 8 45 a.m before this court mr frederick uh you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support the purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your attendance at the next hearing on january 3rd 2024 at 8 45 a.m you will get notice of that in writing are you able to post a bond sir i was able to come up with like two hundred dollars for each case. Yeah, well, let's in view of the fact that you haven't paid in over three years and the sizable arrearage, that's not going to make it. Uh, what I'm going to do is on the uh, each of the uh, 1994 cases, I'm going to set your bond in the amount of one thousand dollars, and in the other the 2005 case, I'll set it in the amount of five hundred dollars. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any so questions, much, sir? So how much is the bond? The two, the bond on all three cases is $2,500. So your excuse, thank you. Yeah, I bet. I have some bench warrants for the record also. Okay, the... go ahead. Good morning to uh, both of you. Court will note that this matter is before the court on the um, plaintiff's motion for entry of judgment of divorce in UCSO. In this uh, particular matter, sir, you've seen the uh, judgment in the uh, UCSO. Is that correct? Oh, yes, I have. I actually have the paperwork here in front of me. And I was going to mention the uh, the days listed uh, that I have my son. Uh, it only says 150. 
and we actually divided like the year up. So she has them for 183 overnights and I have them for 182 days, I guess. Okay. So I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the child support amount. But we well, it would uh, right. if, if, in fact, you're going to uh, pay support based upon that. So, Ms. Baker, uh, enlighten me. What's happening? Um, so, since I've done the uniform child support order, I basically have overnights with my son now, four days a week. We don't even go based off the mediation agreement. Um, I have my son overnight four days a week, and he is at um, Mr. Baker's house three nights a week. Well, sir, obviously, if if in fact you have them three nights a week, that doesn't work out to the 182, as you said. Do you understand that? Uh, I guess. Okay. Well, what we'll do is, Ms. Baker, I'll take some proofs today. You're going to have to change the uh, uniform child support order because that will be different than the dates uh, that you have in there. So support would be set based on overnights. And if he is having three days a week, then he would have basically 156 overnights. And then you would have the balance. So you'd need to put that into the calculation, OK? So I have to completely redo everything. Over You're going to have nights. to redo. You'll have to redo the uniform child support order. That's the only thing you have to redo. Okay. And then resubmit it to the front of the court for their approval. Once they approve that, then we'll be able to complete it. Okay. Ma'am, do you have the uh, script that we provided to you? Um, I have it on my phone. I don't know oh. if my camera will stay on if I... Hold on one second. Okay. Can you still see me? Yes, we can. Okay. You can uh, you can go through that now. You don't have to state what your address is. You can. Uh... Okay. My name is Angela Baker, and I'm the plaintiff in this case. I married the defendant on June 12, 2021, um, in Battle Creek, Michigan, Calhoun County. Um, I filed a complaint divorce on March of 2023. I lived in Michigan for 180 days and live in Calhoun County for 10 days immediately prior to filing this complaint. When I filed my complaint for divorce, all the statements were true. All the statements in my complaint for divorce are still true today. There has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship such that objects of matrimony have been destroyed and there remains no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. I do not believe there is any possibility of reconciliation. I am not currently pregnant. Um, the defendant and I have one minor child together. I have read all the terms of the proposed judgment of divorce, and I agree with them. I would like the court to change my surname to Thomas. I ask that this court grant absolute judgment on divorce. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. The court will find that the testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The court will preserve the proofs in this matter pending receipt of the the new uh, UCSO. As soon as you get that in, ma'am, and you get it approved, then we'll be able to get the uh, matter concluded at that time. You're not divorced until I actually sign that paperwork, which may take yet just a few more weeks, okay? Uh, okay. We'll conclude today. Best of luck to both of you. Now with taking proofs today, you won't have to sh appear back for a hearing. Uh, just as, like I say, as soon as the paperwork arrives and gets approved, then we'll get it entered. So you have a good day and uh, you're free to go. Thanks. 23 at 8.56 a.m. Attorney Jennifer Reed represents defendants. Okay. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. 
Ms. Shear, I'm going to go to you first and then to Ms. Reed, as you are the plaintiff. Uh, the purpose of the uh, scheduling conference is to set in place various dates and procedures so that the case would proceed in an orderly fashion. And we'll do that based upon uh, the, uh, again, what the issues are in dispute. So I'll ask you first, Ms. Shear, what issues do you believe to be in dispute in this case? What do you, sorry, what do you mean? Well, what are you fighting? Your Honor, if I may, we do have a signed consent judgment. Oh, divorce. okay. Well, you're not fighting yeah. about anything then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Reed. Uh, well, that's good then. Uh, we're uh, very early in the process. Uh, you have it signed. Uh, I guess you submitted that to the front of the court, uh, Ms. Reed. We'll be submitting that today. Okay. Be sure, as long as uh, you're here, we'll, what we'll do is take some proof. Ms. Sure, in this matter, you had filed a complaint uh, seeking a divorce from the defendant in this matter. And uh, at the time that you filed that complaint, had you resided in the county of Calhoun and the state of Michigan for more than 180 days immediately preceding the filing? Yeah. And uh, you state... Uh, various allegations in the complaint were they true at the time you filed those and are they still true today yes you stated that there had been a breakdown of the marital relationship to the extent the object of matrimony had been destroyed there is no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved is that accurate that's correct is there any chance that you and the uh, defendant could reconcile and live together as husband and wife no Ma'am, are you currently pregnant? No. <laughs> okay. Court will find that the uh, testimony does establish the statutory basis. Court will preserve the proofs in this matter uh, for having found that there has been a breakdown of the marital relationship. We'll simply await the approvals in this matter and the running of the time frame. The court can't conclude it in less than 180 days, but with what we've done here and once we get the approval, then you shouldn't, uh, we'll just simply have to wait for the time to run and then we'll be able to get that completed. Ms. Uh, Shear, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Ms. Reed, anything? No, Your Honor, but we will hold on to the pleadings until the time frame runs and then okay. submit them. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you both. And uh, we'll conclude this matter. You have a good day. 23 at Thank 9 you. We're going to have to change this. They have his name wrong on the uh, scheduling order. For his last name and here is Lamar. Oh, for D. Oh, and D. It's, yeah. Oh, I'll fix I it. don't know why. Uh, I, I'll fix it after. Okay. Good, good morning to uh, both of you. Uh, this is a uh, scheduling conference whereby we attempt to uh, determine, uh, again, what uh, the issues in dispute so that we can set in place uh, various time frames and processes so that the case would proceed in an orderly fashion. I'll ask uh, Ms. Daniel first. Ms. Daniel, are you aware of what are, what are the issues in dispute in your case? Ms. Daniel, can you hear me? Who's Ms. Daniel? Oh, Smith, I'm sorry. <laughs> they, have, they have it down as Daniel in both. Uh, okay. Ms. Smith, uh, what issues do you believe in dispute? Um, I'm going after full custody because he took my kids out of my home. Okay. So, so custody, support, and parenting time would be in dispute. Yeah. Okay. And, sir, you uh, you recognize that as well, that those are the issues in dispute? Yes, sir, I recognize that those are the issues in dispute. Okay. Do you anticipate that you will need any discovery in this matter? Discovery is the process whereby you would have, be able to acquire information from the other side 
And uh, through depositions, through interrogatories, requests for production of documents, et cetera. What, uh, do you anticipate any discovery, Ms. Smith? Um, not sure what that means. Okay. Well, what, what we'll do is I'll give you a period of time. I'll give you until February 1, 2024 to, to do any discovery should you desire or need to do that. What you'll have to do is get on, uh, acquaint yourself with what discovery is, and then you'll have to serve and take care of that before February 1. The court would then set mediation in February. Uh, mediation is the process whereby you would meet with an attorney mediator and he would attempt to work with you to work out any disputes that you have. Uh, what happens is, uh, again, there's a cost associated with that, that you would each have to pay one half the cost to uh, get that uh, accomplished, but you know, it's a it's a process that works very effective to get matters resolved. So we'll set that for February, I guess. Uh, Miss Smith, do you have anyone that you recommend or would suggest for mediation? Um, I will have to speak to my lawyer about that and ask him who he would recommend. Okay. And uh, Mr. Daniel, do you uh, do you have anybody in particular that you recommend for us? Not at the moment, but I can find somebody. Okay. Well, what's going to happen? You're going to have to do that in a week because if you don't yes, do sir. it in a week, the the mediation clerk will assign a mediator in this particular matter. So, if you can come to an agreement within the week, we'll uh, we'll put that that person down as a mediator or otherwise. A mediator will be assigned. So we, we, so if I'm understanding this correct, we both have to come to an agreement on a mediator. Right, you have to come to an agreement, or uh, or what the mediation clerk will assign someone. <laughs> okay. 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 Court will set uh, March eleventh, two thousand twenty-four, at one thirty p.m. as the settlement conference dates so you would have to be back at that particular time to uh to appear as basically for your settlement conference and uh if the matter has not been settled by that time then the court would set a trial date at that particular time so uh miss smith if you have an attorney at that time your attorney should be present at the uh at the uh settlement conference I'm sure he will be when I talk to him about this. Okay. Ms. Smith, anything else uh, before we conclude? Um, no, not at this moment. Okay. Mr. Daniel, anything else? Um, yeah. The, uh, it, it, when do I get a chance to, to, when do I get a chance to actually speak on this matter? Cause I mean, nothing's been really asked of me other than do I understand her 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 discrepancies or whatever okay. is going on with her side of the case. Well, I don't I don't know if you, what you filed in this uh, particular matter. Have you filed a uh, answer to the complaint in that, sir? Yes, sir, I have. Oh, okay. Then what happens is uh, you'll be able to talk at the mediation. If not, uh, we'll be able to talk when the matter is set for trial. So that's a. Uh, those are the two times when you'd be able to present your case. Roger that. Okay. Okay. We will uh, send out a uh, order in this matter. You'll get it in probably within a week. Uh, make sure that you pay attention to the dates in the order because there are various things in the order that uh, would have a detrimental impact upon your case if you don't comply with those. So. Yes, sir. Okay. We will conclude this matter at uh, 9.06 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. I appreciate okay. your time, sir. Three at 9.07 a.m. Okay. okay. Good you. morning uh, to both of you. This matter is set for a status conference. So we had previously uh, had a uh, conference back on uh, November 22nd where we had uh, put the matter over to allow the parties to 
resolve. Uh, again, the last final issues concerning child support. Uh, Ms. Keen Kennedy, tell me, have we made any headway in this matter? I, I think so. I, my husband and I spoke last night and we came to an agreement on what we felt was fair. Okay. Um, we let, had hope. Let me I'm ask sorry. you, are, are you, are you receiving any public assistance for and on behalf of the child? Uh, yes, I do have a food assistance case. Um, it may, ha it should still be open. Um, there was some issue with some documents that I needed to turn in, but I, I'll just, you know, reapply if need be, but. Um. Okay. The, re the reason I ask is because you said you've come to an agreement on support. If you are receiving public assistance on behalf of the child, you cannot agree upon the support amount. You'd simply have to, the amount that have to be paid would be the uh, child support guideline amount in this matter. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you're still, if the uh, public assistance you're receiving is ongoing, you're going to have to calculate the support based upon the incomes of the parties, and that's the amount that has to be paid. Okay. So if that's the case, I don't know, ma'am, are you using like michiganlegalhelp.org or one of those services? Uh well, I tried going through them. Um, they sent me over to the Council and Advocacy Law Line. And from there, I, I took, it was months before I could actually reach a person. But I did finally reach somebody. But I, I got some of my answers that I was looking for. But uh, not, not about that, no. Okay. Well, the case is getting very old, so... We one of two things we've got to get it resolved, or the court is going to set it for trial, and then you'll have to try the case. Well, my biggest issue was when I went to go figure out custody or not custody, but like child support payments, like you had asked me to do. I called down to front of the court and I said, Oh, well, we don't have a final decree of divorce, and we don't have anything for you. Go to county. So they transferred me over to county and county said, well, we can't find your case. And then they finally found it and they said, well, you know, there, there's really nothing we can do. This is the amount your husband is calculated to pay. It's like $364 or $74 a month. And I didn't think that that was really unfair. But when you calculate in, you know, the cost of health care and stuff, then, yeah, that does become a lot. So you know. Okay. Well, what happens, let me tell you, if you went to Michigan Legal Help, you can do it online. And what happens is it allows you to calculate. You put in the incomes, health care. If there's a health care insurance expense, you put that in. If there are any other deductions from income, union dues, uniforms, things like that, you would put that in. And then at the end, it gives you a number and says, this is the amount that should be paid pursuant to the child support formula. So you don't have to calculate anything. You just put the numbers in and it will do it all for you. So if, if say, for example, when I filed for this divorce and I went online and it said, you know, create an account and it'll save all this. And then when I went to go log out, I for, realized I forgot something, went back, it didn't save it. Do I refill out this whole thing all over yes. again? You're going to have to do it again. If it doesn't save it, there's no way for them to retrieve it. Uh, okay. So. All right. Okay. What you're going to do, ma'am, you're going to have to recalculate that. And then once you, you do, you'll have to get the, uh, the judgment of divorce in and the, uh, Uniform Child Support Order to the front of the court for their approval. I understand you sent some paperwork into the clerk's office, but those are separate entities, the front of the court and the circuit court clerk. So you're going to have to send that paperwork to the front of the court's office to get the approval from them. And that approval has nothing to do with the clerk's office, okay? Well, that's what confused me because when I went down there initially, 
they gave me a pamphlet on how to calculate uh, like income and tax return money and stuff like that. And I really wasn't sure what I was doing. I, I got closest to what I figured would be right. But Tim's hours don't, I mean, he's always full time, but um, sometimes he works seven days a week. Sometimes. Okay. Let me tell you the easiest thing. We're at the end of the year. You can get, a, you can get his most recent paycheck stub and divide it out over the year, whether it's at this point, whether the last paycheck stub shows 50 weeks or 51 weeks, I don't know. Just divide it out. And then that would be the, you know, the weekly amount. Then you basically figure it out on a monthly amount. You put it into there and then it kicks out the numbers to you. It's a real simple process. Well, I did that, but he said it was calculated at being more than what he could afford. Well, it may be more than what he says he can afford, but that's the support guideline amount. And quite frankly, they put that in place, the legislature did, and they don't care if he can afford it or not afford it. It's based upon what the guideline amount says, and that's what the court's required to follow. So, uh, All right. You look at you look at the income, divide it out over the weeks and the months, and that's the amount of money we use. All right. Um I guess I guess I don't know other other than I guess I have to go back online and redo all of this. You'll you'll have to go back online and do all that, correct. Ugh. Well, all right. you, you needed to save it. You didn't save it, so that's no. I I did save it. I clicked on save. It didn't save it. Oh, it was okay. a full malfunction. Okay. Well, I can't tell you. It's it's not our. It's not the courts. Uh, uh, I guess you say app or anything. We just we utilize that among other apps to attempt to assist people as they go forward with being in pro per. But unfortunately, when you represent yourself, you're held the same standard as an attorney and having to calculate and having to do all of this. So in your case, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do a judgment of divorce, uniform child support order, and a judgment information form. Those three documents, you send those to the front of the court. If they're right and correct, they will send you an approval. If they're not, they will object and notify you as to what the problem is and what you have to correct. Does that mean I have to start all over because he wanted me to, I mean, does that like reset the whole divorce? And no, drive this no it's what you're doing is you're concluding the divorce to conclude it. You have to have a judgment of divorce, a uniform child support order and a judgment information form, those three documents. And once you submit those to the front of the court, it takes about two weeks to get the approval. And then once you get the approval, then we'll be able to conclude the case. Okay. All right. With that, sir, is there anything you have any questions about? No, no, I don't. Okay. Ma'am, because we're getting really late on time, um, as far as the days, this matter is getting very old. What I'm going to do is take some testimony from you at this point. We would have to do it at some point. So why don't we do that today? Get that concluded. And then this way, if you get all the paperwork uh, filed correctly, we don't have to have you back for another hearing. Ms. King Kennedy, in this matter, you filed a complaint for divorce. And prior to filing that complaint to, for divorce, had you resided in the county of Calhoun for more than 10 days in the state of Michigan for more than 180 days immediately preceding the filing? Yes. And in this uh, particular matter, when you filed the complaint, you stated that there had been a breakdown of the marital relationship to the extent the object of matrimony had been destroyed and there remained no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Is that correct? Yes. Is there any chance that you and the defendant could reconcile and live together as husband and wife? No. Are you currently pregnant? No. In the complaint, you also allege various other things. And at the time that you filed that were those allegations true and do they remain true today yes they do okay. court will find that the testimony does establish the statutory basis 
there has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The court will preserve the proofs in this matter pending receipt of the approved uh, judgment, UCSO and judgment information form. Uh, what I'll do, ma'am, I'll set this for another status in 30 days to see how you're going and to see if you're getting everything done correctly. That way the, the case doesn't get missed and just lost in the system some way. So we'll set it back up. Uh, sir, if you don't have any objections or anything of that nature at that time, you don't need to appear. Uh, and uh, then only Miss Keene Kennedy would need to appear at that time. So that being nothing else, the court will let you go. We'll conclude this matter at 9.19 a.m. Have a good day. <laughs>